Video games are an amazing medium through which players can experience stories in a way that no other medium can replicate. The players are no longer just observers of a story, they become actors. They incarnate the main characters and can decide to some extent where the story will be going. Dialogues are one of the game mechanics that help the developers tell a story while still providing the player with some interesting choices. Dialogue systems come in all shapes and sizes. They can be as easy or as complex as you want them to be. Perhaps you just want to display the dialogues in simple text boxes, like in Pokemon. Perhaps the players can choose replies in a list, like in Skyrim. Or perhaps you want dialogues to be in fully voiced cutscenes, like in Mass Effect. No matter what you want your game to look like, the core of a dialogue system will remain the same. Just like in the inventory system video, I'll show you what this core system can look like and how it can be integrated in the UI. All the code that I write for this tutorial is available on my GitHub. Feel free to check it out, you'll find a link in the description. So where do we even begin? Well, in its simplest form, a dialogue system is just a list of dialogue lines. A line can contain some text, some information on the speaker, an audio track, a duration, and much more. However, as soon as we introduce to the player the ability to reply, dialogues lose their linearity. Each possible reply can lead to different outcomes. As such, the dialogue can't be a simple list anymore. It becomes a graph. If we want different lines depending on what the player has done in the story, same thing, the dialogue becomes a graph. So let's start by creating a narration line class. It will inherit from scriptable object, that way we can store dialogue lines as Unity assets. I didn't want to call this class dialogue line, since those lines can theoretically be used outside of a dialogue system. After all, NPCs can talk even outside of dialogues. For the time being, we'll keep the narration line class simple. It will contain some text for the line and a speaker. Ideally, I'd need something else than a string for the text. After all, we'll most likely want to handle multiple languages in our game. However, for the sake of brevity, I'll stick to a string since localization is a large subject that deserves a video of its own. The speaker will be a narration character class. It will be quite simple too. For now, it'll just contain a string for the name of a speaker. However, depending on how we want our dialogues to be displayed, we may need more properties further down the line, such as an image. Next, let's create our dialogue graph. For the nodes of a graph, we can distinguish at least two types. To keep things simple, both types of nodes will inherit from the same abstract class, and this class will contain a narration line. Our first type of node will simply contain a reference to the next node in the graph. That way, by chaining nodes one after the other, we end up with a sequence of lines we can display however we please. The second type of node will be used to represent the choices players can make. As such, this class will contain a list of choices. And each choice will contain a reference to a node as well as some extra information that can be used for the display of a choice. In this case, I'll simply have some text that will act as a preview for the choice. In theory, the first type of node can be replaced by a choice node with only a single choice. But personally, I prefer separating both those cases. Nonetheless, I would be curious to know if there are some people who prefer having just one type of node. Feel free to leave a comment if you have an opinion on that matter. In any event, since I don't know yet what kind of operations I'll perform on the nodes, I implemented a visitor design pattern. That way, whenever I want to add a new functionality to the nodes, no need to modify their classes. All I need to do is create a new implementation of the visitor. Furthermore, using that pattern will help me keep the nodes agnostic of trivialities such as the user interface. If you want to find out more on the visitor design pattern, please let me know in the comments, I'll be glad to make a video on that subject. The last scriptable object we will need will be the dialogue class. As you can guess, this class serves to represent the notion of a dialogue. So for the time being, it will simply contain the reference to the first node of a dialogue. Anyway, now that all of the scriptable objects are done, we now need a class to handle the sequencing of the dialogues. This is where the dialogue sequencer comes into play. As you can see, I tend to choose some fairly obvious names for my classes. Anyway, as you can see, the sequencer keeps track of the current dialogue and node. It has four major functions to start or end dialogues and nodes. 
If they succeed, we send some events and update the tracks, dialog and node. However, should any of those functions fail, they throw an exception. With all of those classes we should finally have everything we need. For the time being we'll create our dialog scriptable objects from the inspector. But in a future video I'll teach you how to make a nodal editor to make editing dialogues a lot easier. Now let's display our dialogues in the simplest way possible, with text boxes. You know when I said we were done with scriptable objects? It turns out I lied. We also need a scriptable object to create an event channel. If you haven't seen Unity's video on game architecture with scriptable objects, I definitely recommend you have a look. It's a goldmine of information and explains how event channels work. I will of course leave a link to that video in the description. Anyway, all you need to know here is that we have six events. One event to request the start of a dialogue and another to request the start of a node. Those events are watched by the dialogue sequencer to know when to update the dialogue. Those events can also be plugged in Unity events, so that means we can in theory request the start of a dialogue from the button in the UI. The other four events serve to know when a dialogue or a node actually start or end. I use them to know when to display the dialogue UI. Since we want a text box, that means we need a UI panel and some text fields. I added one text for the name of a speaker and another for the actual dialogue text. Be sure to use a text mesh pro component in this case. It's better than the default Unity text in pretty much every single way. To update the text at each node of a dialogue, I created a component called UI Dialogue Text Box Controller. This component listens to events from the event channel and updates the visibility of a text box accordingly. This component will also implement the dialogue node visitor interface. That way we'll easily be able to differentiate each type of dialogue node. In the case of a choice node, we'll spawn multiple buttons. One for each choice. Once the player has chosen a reply, we send the event to notify the dialogue sequencer to go to the next node. In the case of a regular node, we send that event when the player presses on a given input. With the text box set up, we now have a very basic dialogue visual. Should you want a fancier UI or add animations, you'll only have to change the UI code. No need to touch the core dialogue system code. To be able to start dialogues, we need a new component, the dialogue instigator. This component will go on the player game object. As you can see, this component basically holds a dialogue sequencer and exchanges some events between the dialogue sequencer and the dialogue channel. By this point we can already test the dialogue UI via some buttons I added. Those buttons simply request the start of a dialogue when pressed. However, to start dialogues properly we need another component. This component is a generic interaction and it serves to detect when the player is near a game object that can start a dialogue, like NPCs. I will explain how it works here since this is the subject for another video I plan to release soon. All you need to know is that if an interaction is detected, it will send an event to notify which dialogue must be started. The last thing we must handle is to prevent the player from moving while in the dialogue. To do so, I rely on a state machine to know what state the game is in. I won't detail how this works either, since game flow management is another subject I wish to keep for a future video. All I'll say is that when we are in the dialogue state, I deactivate the component handling player movement. And with all of that code, whenever the player interacts with an NPC, a dialogue starts. And depending on what answers we choose, the dialogue will follow different branches. If we speak with a different NPC, we'll start a totally different dialogue. And there you have it, you now know how to create your own dialogue system. In this case the dialogue is displayed in text boxes, but keep in mind that it can be displayed any way you want. With the same core system you could potentially have some fully voiced and animated cutscenes. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial, and if you did please consider liking and subscribing for some similar content, and if you have some questions feel free to leave them in the comment section, I will be glad to answer. In any event, have fun coding and see you next time!